Okay, this problem sees a, essentially a lever arm welded to a pipe, which is then welded firmly to a wall. And you're asked to analyze three things, the weld size required at the wall, the weld size required between the pipe and the arm, and then the static factor safety in the pipe itself. So that weld size being required is based on factor safety of two against yield, and then right here are the yield properties for the rod itself. <clears throat> This rod is quite a bit weaker than the base material, so you would definitely want to base the weld calculation on the, the rod itself. The, uh, the weld symbols here, we just have a fillet weld all the way around that location, and then between the arm and the, the pipe, it's also a fillet weld, but it's on both sides of the weld. So that's going to double the material properties there. I'm going to start with the weld between the wall and the pipe, part A. I'm just going through the forces for this. I've got force F acting down, which means I absolutely have to have a force F acting up. So I'm going to have a direct shear. That force is offset by distance A, which creates a torque. So I'm going to have a torque, or excuse me, a shear due to torsion. That force F is also offset by distance L, so that produces a bending moment at the wall. I'll have a shear due to that bending force. So we've got all three possible stresses in play here. Start with the direct shear. I'm going to call it tau prime. That's just F over A. The section properties are calculated ahead of time by typical methods. So 643.2 divided by H, that's in PSI. For bending. Call this one tau double prime. The moment's going to be the 5,000 pound load times distance L, which is 12 inches. C is the outer diameter of the pipe divided by 2. Remember the weld is located at the outer diameter, so that's where the that's where the calculation is going to take place. So out of that, we get 88.24 divided by H. And finally, we have torsion, which we'll called tau triple prime. BTR over J. Torque is now 5,000 times distance A, so 7. And that gives 2572 divided by H, PSI. Now all three of those are mutually perpendicular. None of them are parallel. It's possible in a problem like this to have some that are parallel, but in this case they're not. So they can all be added directly with a root sum square. And doing that, we get a value of 91, or excuse me, 92.14 over H. And all we have to do now is solve that, or rather plug that into the factor safety calculation. If you know what you want, a factor of safety to be 2. The yield strength and shear for this material is 32,890. And we're dividing by that shear stress which gives a height required of dot five six inches. For the weld between the arm and the pipe, <clears throat> first off, just going to think real quick about the forces in play. That force here is still offset by distance A, so the torque still exists. Uh, the section properties for J are different. They're essentially doubled, so that's going to change the stress, but the torque is still there. That direct shear force is also passing through this, but if you think about that, 
Um, I'm going to end up including it, but if you think about it, if the fit between the pipe and the arm were really close, then that shear force could transfer mechanically between the two components. In other words, the weld doesn't necessarily have to transfer that shear force. Now, if the fit is pretty loose, then chances are the weld is going to end up carrying some of that. So I'm just going to include it in the weld uh, analysis to be essentially conservative. So direct, basically these are just going to have the values. Uh, we're doubling the area because the weld's on both sides of this joint. If we double the area in the direct shear calculation, it just halves the, uh, the shear. And likewise, we're going to double the polar moment of inertia. So there's twice as much weld to carry the torque which is again just going to have the shear stress. And that comes out to be 1286 over 2, or excuse me, over H. And that's it. So we've got root sum square now that just involves tau prime and tau triple prime. which comes out to be 1326 divided by h. We're plugging that to the exact same factor of safety equation. So we've got 2 is equal to 32,890 divided by 1326 over h, which gives us a height 0.08 inches. Much smaller, uh, the weld's doubled, and it doesn't have to carry any bending stress. Any bending stress. So, uh, Smaller weld is, is what we'd expect there. Now real quick before I move on, if we go back up to this, um, you, could, you could visualize it there being a bending stress in this as well, but it's not going to be on the plane of the weld. The weld is on this circular plane here, and whatever bending stress we have would be on this plane here. So there is a bending stress at play at this joint as well, but it's not on the plane of the weld. So with this analysis, we don't necessarily have to include it. Um, the bending stress would manifest itself in the, the, um, the arm itself. So we could conduct a stress analysis at the top of the arm, and that would include some effects of bending. But it doesn't really go into the plane of the weld itself, so it's not included. Uh, and lastly, looking at the shear, or excuse me, the yield factor safety for the pipe itself. Um, this is going to occur at the location where bending is greatest, essentially. This goes just back to the standard machine design stress analysis. And it's going to be a maximum at the wall on top of the pipe. That's where the bending stress is going to be maximum. At the side of the pipe, bending stress would be zero. You'd have a transverse shear stress, but it's not going to lead to failure. The bending definitely is. So for this, we need the moment of inertia and the polar moment of inertia for the pipe itself. No longer care one bit what the weld looks like. We're dealing with the pipe geometry now. So since it is hollow, we'll take the outer diameter to the fourth, minus the inner diameter to the fourth, for a value of 2.833 inches to the fourth. And the polar moment comes out to double that, 5.666 inches to the fourth. Now we know there's a weld there that's going to probably produce some static stress concentration, but we know nothing about it to include that effect, so for this analysis it's going to be neglected. If you needed that static stress concentration, you could uh, approximate the fillet, or excuse me, approximate the weld as a fillet and uh, calculate something out that way using the, the tables in Shigley. But uh, we're going to ignore that for now. This is really just a sanity check. If we're looking for a factor of safety of two in the welds, we'd like to have something similar or higher in the base material.
there's no, you know, in the welds we're, we're calculating that worst case sort of maximized shear stress. So this is this is not that. This is a static stress analysis on a known geometry. So we can calculate the actual normal stresses and shear stresses and combine them with either the maximum shear stress theory or the max distortion energy theory. In this case, I'm going to use MDET. And that's just going to look like our effective stress is the bending stress. Rooted comes out to be 41,520. So factor safety is going to be NY divided by that stress, or excuse me, SY divided by that stress. At this point, it's it's a little bit ambiguous as to whether you would use the the wire material yield strength or the base material yield strength because the base material is a bit stronger. Its yield strength for uh, 1040 cold drawn is 71,000 psi, whereas the E70 rod is 57,000. So it's not uh, not immediately apparent, but I'm going to calculate it both ways. Uh, so for the rod first, it'd be 57,000 over 41,520, which gives a value of 1.37. And that again is based on the rod, or let's call it filler rod, just to be clear. And for the base material, it'd be 71,000 over 41,520. One dot seven one. So as to which one of them is more accurate, uh, the truth is around the weld you're going to have a mixture of those two materials. Um, typically I'm treating the analysis uh, for the welds themselves as with the weld rod material uh, because the, the bulk of the metal that we're analyzing is going to be made up of filler material. Um, Whereas, as in this case, we're, we're just analyzing the pipe itself. It's, it's probably, the truth might be somewhere in between these two values. But either way, they're both below the factor safety that we actually require in the weld itself. So it, it may be advantageous to just go to a heavier pipe in this case and push these numbers up well north of two. That way it's just not an issue at all. But in this case, um, I would suggest that as a more conservative answer, that would probably be what I would use. Uh, the standard idea in this is that you'd use a filler material that's a little bit stronger than your base material so that this isn't much of an issue. There's quite a bit of difference between these two values, uh, 71 and 57, so it may not be the best match of base metal to filler material. But uh, anyway, in the interest of conservatism, given what I know about the problem, I'd say that's the uh, solution that I was looking for.